Hello, Advent Squirrels. I decided to do this early. I was going to wait till I got more done. Yes, I'm so far behind still, but we're not stressing. I just can't wait to see what the next color is, even though I've <laughs> got two more to do after this. And you can see how long each section is. It's okay. I feel good. I've at least got one done. Whenever this gets done, it gets done. But I hope it gets, if it doesn't get done during, doesn't Advent go to January the 6th? I'm thinking. Hoping I'll get it done by then. I'm not going to let it linger, languish in a, in a pile. I hope. <laughs> because I do want to give these as gifts. One reason besides falling asleep is I've been messing with, I can always use scrunchies. I'm always in need of a certain color of scrunchie. Now this little nugget here is one of another Shapias. I still call it Shapias. That's what my Dutch friend said. That's as close as I can get to how they say it. These are the acrylic. These are, part of them are stone, let's see. It says there are 36 of the stone washed XL and 14 of the river washed color pack. It doesn't tell. Oh, this said it was $49.95, but. You know, I bought it with a 40% off coupon way back when. And the reason some of them are missing is because I've just recently started pulling them out to make scrunchies. There's an elastic in here. Y'all know how to make scrunchies, right? They're so easy to make. Even I could make them fairly quickly. I just started this one last night and then i put it aside because i said i gotta get back on this other thing so you can uh you just take the hair tie the elastic and then you start crocheting over it you can do i did i usually do singles first and then start doing doubles looks like all these are singles but I like to really scrunch them up. The more you keep pushing them aside and, you know, the more stitches you put inside of a stitch, you know, just do increases. Like, uh, I just put maybe on the first layer, like two in each one, two in each stitch to double it. Now just keep pushing them aside to make it really, really roughly. You don't have to make it this roughly. You make it however you want to. But I love making scrunchies, and these are just perfect. I think this one will make a whole one, but if it doesn't, I'll grab another one. These have been sitting around forever. I've had these and just kind of been using them as props to sit around for pretties, but that's dumb. They need to be used. So... I'm so glad. It's kind of weird to think about doing a scarf in mercerized cotton but that way this can be worn as just an you know it's so pretty and lacy not pretty because i made it just the pattern is but you can wear it any time of year <laughs> the scarf of many colors okay memory doggone oh i gotta today is the is it the 21st 22nd 23rd yeah December 21st. Happy December 21st, everybody. Wow. Look at this pretty color. To you, it looks blue. To me, it looks like a mint green. And it's number 385. So, I will have to look that up. And tomorrow, I will get back to you. My mouth is so dry. I should have brought my... Oh, darn it. Should have brought my water in here because I'm getting ready to read next. And I'm doing this on Dana's craft hour, but I checked 
before I started and she wasn't on yet, so maybe I can maybe I can catch her. Okay. Uh memory, memory, memory. Um I loved my grandmother, my mother's mom. Oh man. My dad's mom passed when he was just a little tight. He was five years old. Now, there's a story. Maybe I should tell that. That was a family, like a skeleton in the closet. My dad's dad, I mean, my dad and his little brother, Ken, you know, the one that brothers married sisters, um, they were full-blooded brothers um that was my grandpa's first wife and i think he never really got over her and he drank the rest of his life terribly he was the drunk of the town and he remarried and that's how dad got a lot of um a lot of half brothers and one half sister and uh we always loved them just like they were full-blooded or whatever and Beanie, we got, her name was Bernice, but we called her Beanie. So she was my grandmother on that side. Sweet as she could be, she used to keep uh, me and my cousin Terry um, when my mom was still working. So when I was really, really young. Um, but uh, Dad's real mother, you know, the, the story was that I always heard was that she died from complications of diabetes that she had diabetes really bad and possibly because they were pretty poor they were poor they were dirt poor uh that maybe she didn't get her insulin or didn't take it like she was supposed to possibly because of the money thing that's the story i had all always heard until I don't know. It was at a Van Hoy reunion probably 20 or so years ago, you know. I'm, I'm knocking on number 62 birthday. <laughs> not, not real close, but in the spring. So, about 20 years ago, I guess. But it took me as quite a shock that what really happened, and my aunt, my great aunt, Eva Jane, she was the historian of the family you know, unofficial, but she knew everything. Everybody's birthdays, every, you know, just everything. All the family stuff. And sweet as she could be, and funny, she could tell the funniest stories. But, um, I guess we were at a family reunion when I found out that she had really passed away from complications of an abortion. Ooh. Way back then, you know, stuff was pretty dirty and a lot of ladies died of uh, hemorrhages or infections from dirty tools and this and that. Because she was diabetic, her doctor advised her to have an abortion like she wouldn't make, like she would die because she was pregnant that therefore she had that abortion and she died from like I say complications of that but that was really a what I better so the memory today is kind of a icky one but anyway and then grand, grandpa I don't think ever really got it even though he remarried and everything but I think he had the case of the guilts and that he tried to drown his guilts with alcohol I think is how it got started anyway from from Aunt Eva Jane and she's a pretty reliable source she's long gone now too boy do I miss them I used to love to sit around and listen to the old you know country stories they would tell Okay, now my mom on my mother's side, she was an absolute nut. The stuff that she would do <laughs> and say. <laughs> oh, mercy me. And I used to look forward always when we were kids. Terry, my cousin, and I 
would spend a week or two with grandmother. She lived over the river and through the woods. She lived a good, I don't know, it's not that far, probably about 30 to 45 minutes away in a little town called Churchland. And uh, we would stay, and she all went in the summer times. We were out of school, and they had a barn. Grandpa, who was my step grandfather, because her husband died when he was like 42 from a, he had a bad heart, and he drank like a fish. Um, so both my parents' dads were alcoholics. Um, but anyway, grandmother just worked herself to a frazzle. She was a mill worker, worked at Cannon Mills, raised four daughters basically on her own, did all kinds of sewing, uh, did people's hair and all on the side after she would come home, plus take care of four young, four girls and all that. And so that woman could sew. They would always get compliments, grandmother did, and, the, and her daughter's mom and her sisters about how nice they looked and grandmother would make she just like had a magic wand with her sewing skills and she would cut patterns out of new make up her own patterns and cut them out of newspapers and make uh get material from the feed store you know they had um print material on the feed sacks uh, I don't know where they did it because people used it for, for you know, to make clothes with or whatever. But they had some right pretty stuff. But anyway, they were always getting complimented, which was amazing because they were so dirt poor, too. But Grandma really knew how to stretch her dollar. Uh, but anyway, the, the summers we would spend with her, they had this barn. And we slept, and my grandfather was, boy, was he tidy with everything. He was a handyman. He could do anything. And he was retired from the North Carolina Finishing Company, which is why they lived, well, he, he lived there. And grandmother lived in Rockwell, which was just a few miles that way, to Churchland that way, because that's where grandpa was from. And he was, like I say, the only one. I mean, I didn't say the only one I ever remember because my real grandfather, my, yeah, my blood grandfather passed before I was born. Mom was pregnant with my brother. But anyway, grandfather was weird. He was, um, he was nice. He was a godly man. He was, like I say, a good handyman and stuff. But he, he was odd, I guess. Um, he just liked things. To be a certain way and when you went there you just were well behaved and you knew not to mess with certain stuff and I always tried to get I loved him to death I just always tried to get on his good set and, and grandmother said years later after he passed that I was always his favorite yay but anyway so he had this barn but it was meticulously clean and organized we slept on the top level, and it had a bed, and it. it was fixed up like a little guest bedroom, really. So, and there was no air in there. There was, a, you know, windows on each end, big windows with screens, and they had these big fans, so uh, Terry and I would sleep there in the summer, just because we wanted to. She had a spare bedroom that we could have used. But I remember one not, one morning in particular, and it might have happened a lot of times, but I remember this one particular morning that grandmother, and they always had these great gardens, these vegetable gardens, flowers and stuff too, but oh man, grandma could cook. She could make a tomato taste like something you ain't never had in your life. By sprinkling, you have it, salt and pepper on it, but just a wee bit of sugar to bring out the flavor and the juices and stuff. Fry up the fat back, make the biscuits, just, you know, all kinds of veggies and stuff. But so one morning she was out in the garden picking stuff, and we were still sleeping. I think it must have been like nine, which to grandmother was like you might as well have been sleeping until noon, I guess. 
And what we woke up to was barn people arguing his dad up there. <laughs> so Grandma thought we were sleeping too late, but I'll never forget. <laughs> barn people arguing his dad up there. So we woke up and went to help Grandma in the garden. But man, could she cook make biscuits so light and fluffy and everything was so good i want grandma to come back <laughs> for her funnies and for her cooking no, i wouldn't wish that on her i know she's having a fine time up there i love you folks so very much i hope you're having fun and doing i know it's a crazy year but make the best of it it don't do any good to be all gloom, despair, and agony on me. Whoa. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. <laughs> you all know that he how to. Don't flag me, YouTube. <laughs> I do not claim the rights to that. It was he haw. He haw. Anyway, y'all have a blessed day, and I'm live at 5 today. Whoopee! Can't wait to see y'all. We'll do some something. Something Christmassy. Anyway, you do something Christmassy. Even if it's singing Jingle Bells. Uh, if you got grand youngins, make some cookies with them. Just some easy cookies. I saw some of those real easy, like, Danish wet no mexican wedding cookies that are in a bowl that had very few ingredients in it look around find something something easy to make or just whatever right around look at christmas lights tonight do you get that crafting on with that needle or that those needles or that hook or that spinning wheel or that loom <laughs> I just want you to be happy. Love to you all. Be sweet. Don't be ugly. Love you. Bye-bye.